Welcome to Heart of the Matter, Kristen Wong Tang. What a absolute honor to meet you. Thank, thank you so much. Yes, and thank you. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, today we're getting ready to la launch the campaign office, so there's a little bit of commotion. Yes, and how exciting. The buzz is already starting. People are already coming in. We know you to be such a huge advocate for a safe neighbourhood, gun violence, everything that a community needs. What, what do you think your, for the re-election, what are you really going to focus on? Um, so Ward 13 has uh, 110,000 residents, so I'm going to have to uh, knock on a lot of doors and uh, try to talk to as many voters as possible. Uh, the issues that I care deeply about, which I know are also issues for the community, are making sure that our communities are affordable. Uh, Toronto is a very expensive city to live in uh, and we don't want people to be priced out. Uh, I also know that uh, when it comes to building livable and, uh, and safe neighbourhoods, they have to be uh, healthy. So we want people to recognize that there's no places that they can't go. Uh, Toronto should be welcoming for people who are age 8 to 80. Every Everyone has a space here, um, and those are some of the biggest issues that we're working on. And of course, re recently Toronto has seen a spate of gun violence, and I've been the leading advocate on City Council on gun control. Yes, I saw something last night. I was doing my research um, about the Bill C-71 that's currently in, in, in before Senate. That's Do you right. want to talk to me about what, what that actually means? Uh, yes, so um, during the, uh, the Prime Minister Harper's uh, reign, he actually destroyed the uh, long gun registry, and then he went about to destroy destroy the long gun data that came with the registry. Uh, so we in Ontario effectively have no uh, real uh, strong gun control. Uh, we don't have a mandatory uh, uh, gun licensing that's kept in one central place. Um, so the new Bill C-71 is actually a bill that's designed to try to close that gap under the new Liberal government. Um, I feel that that bill is okay. Uh, it's a good start, but certainly it can be strengthened. And strengthening that bill would would require us going back to uh, proper regulations, proper licensing, popular controls and maintenance of that data and, uh, and that is not entirely in that bill right now. Interesting. Well, we know that violence is a complex issue, um, and I know that we, you know, we could spend hours talking about yeah. that. But what do you think the key elements are that that underlies why there is violence in in any city, not just Toronto? Obviously, it's a worldwide issue. What, yeah. what do you think the crux is? Um, I think we're looking at uh, systemic poverty, uh, racial injustice. Uh, Any time you have people who are feeling left behind, uh, if there are apparatuses and, and, and institutions, uh, whether it's government or perhaps just the, the way society is built around that oppresses one group by another, people are going to feel that tension. And so we want to be able to get to the root causes of violence, which means that we have to address social injustices, we have to address racism, we have to address poverty, which is very, very violent. Uh, we have to make sure that men become allies in the fight to reduce uh, domestic and intimate partner violence. Uh, we need to be able to um, support communities uh, based on what they know that they already need and not necessarily come in with prejudgments and if we're able to do that including reaching the kids as early as possible um, from age 8 to 12 uh, which are critical years with yeah with after-school programs to show them that there's a different way of life uh, to show them that there's hope and opportunity and that they too belong I think that we will see a dramatic reduction of, of gun violence and of course you compat that uh, with uh, concurrently uh, with a stronger, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more effective gun control. That sounds incredible, and I said, easier said than done, but it sounds like you really are making this change. Now, in terms of women representing the community and government, we're up around 30%, is that correct, of women representation in the municipality? Uh, yes, so in the City of Toronto, we have approximately, under the new, the current ward system, which is 44 seats, uh, we have about 30% represented by women. Um, and effective representation means that we want to be able to have the faces of government officials elected officials that actually look like the communities that they represent. Uh, when I ride the Toronto public transit system, um, so I'm on the TTC or perhaps I'm uh, on the subway or taking a streetcar, I see the faces of Toronto. It is extremely diverse, it's dynamic, but then when I walk into City Hall, um, that is not the same reality. Uh, so currently I'm the only uh, woman of colour, uh, the only out member of, uh, of the LGBT community on City Council, and uh, when I think about how big the 
population is in Toronto, 2.8 million people. We speak over 200 languages. Uh, over 50% of us are racial minorities, and then I cannot be the only one. Right. Doesn't make sense, right? But you know what? You are a trailblazer, Christian. Congratulations for, for your courage. I mean, how did you actually get into politics? I know you had a very successful real estate business um, and a business owner. How did, what motivated you to want to get into politics? Um, largely, I wanted to give back to my city. I'll, I'll be very honest. Toronto is my first love. Yeah. And um, and as a, as a kid who moved to Canada in 1975, uh, I moved into one of the most desolate, um, poorest working class neighborhoods in the city, uh, lived in social housing. And, uh, and I think that this city has given my family and I every single opportunity. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, Toronto is this amazing global village. People from around the world choose to live here. Uh, we are Me included. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, and I also think that uh, we are a social miracle. Uh, we are able to demonstrate probably to the country and to the world what pluralism, multiculturalism, inclusion can look like yes. uh, when, when, we're, when we're able to reach out um, and go beyond the, just the language barriers and the cultural barriers and the racial barriers. Uh, there's far more that unites us than divides us um, and that's why I wanted to run. I want to be part of this amazing energy uh, that, that is part of Toronto. Uh, and incredible. not only is it my first love, nobody ever forgets their first love. Yes, right? so, so true, so yeah. true. And how do you think, that, um, having women's voices representing the community, how do you think that that impacts um, the community and the world at large, society as a whole? Yeah, so interestingly, um, tr uh, women are 52% of the population, uh, but when we think about who actually sits in government and who sits at decision-making tables, including boardrooms, uh, it's mostly men. And uh, and that means that they're going to bring their values and their lived experiences and their life experiences to the decision-making. And oftentimes it doesn't reflect the, re the reality of, uh, of mothers uh, or perhaps uh, women who are uh, fleeing violence uh, or they, are, um, uh, they have more financial security. So what we want to do is actually include women to the conversation and to be able to make a, a, a government documents and policies and programs and services work for men and women, boys and girls. It doesn't mean we create different programs for different people, but it means that when the programs and services are delivered, they're able to meet men and women where they are, boys and girls where they are. Um, and if you put an intersectional lens over that, uh, it means that we're able to meet diverse women, yes. women with living with disabilities, uh, women who are LGBT where they are. And we know that uh, those intersections cross uh, all genders, yes. uh, and that means that men of color will be um, will be addressed. It means that uh, you know men living with disabilities will be addressed, and so that's why we want to make sure that women's voices and women's uh, concerns are are back on the urban agenda. You are an inspiration. I'm going to wish you every success for this Thank upcoming you. election. As far as I'm concerned, you deserve to win. Thank you, so <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and enjoy today. You you deserve every success. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Thank you. We won't take anything for granted. Uh, we know it's a big election, um, but it is uh, it is exciting to see the community rally with the support around us.